Hello everyone, welcome to the Red's Take. I'm um, sorry, I've taken a little bit of a break there. And as far as figuring audio and all that, I'm trying this new um, software for filming, so we'll see how I like it or not. Uh, but it's that time of the week where it's time to go over my NFL um, takeaways from the past week, my NFL predictions for this upcoming week. So let's get started. Um, as you see here, we have the Bills versus the Patriots. Um, the Patriots, you know, once again, got exposed. Well, they have a winnable game this week. Their schedule is difficult going forward, so we'll see if the Patriots can sneak in the playoffs. Um, I doubt it for the Bills. And to me, while three wins is good in a row, they and they have retained the one seed for right now, which is good, I still need to see a little bit more from them to make me feel comfortable that they're Super Bowl contenders, especially with the news that Von Miller's out now for the rest of the year. Um, for starters, you know, can they get a running game going like they did against the Patriots without relying on Josh Allen or can Josh Allen limit turnovers, stuff like that. Um, next, you got the Steelers versus the Falcons. Um, it was a tough, tough home loss for the Falcons there because you really want to try to get have the Bucks there to win the division. Uh, but now I think with this loss, this may have been the nail in the coffin right here. Um, of course, if they beat the Bucks, there's still a slight chance, but uh, I'm not seeing it. And for the Steelers, I mean, don't look now, but they have won three in a row. And when you look at the schedule, you get the Ravens this week without Lamar Jackson. And you get Panthers, Raiders at home, and then you're at Ravens. By that point, Lamar should be back, we'll see, and then the Browns. So it's very possible that the Steelers are going to finish 8-9, or even best case, you know, 9-8. Now, even if they go 9-8, that's not going to be good enough to make the playoffs since the Jets and the Patriots both have the tiebreakers um, over the Steelers, and they'll have around the same records. But that's good, positive direction that you can take in, um, into next season, and you may have your quarterback for the future and can't pick it. So good positive momentum there after a horrible start. Broncos versus Ravens. Um, sucks for... It sucks, you know, that Lamar got injured and all that, but you know, and it's an it's another way that the Broncos lost lose the game, you know, losing to backup, but it is what it is. Um Packers versus Bears. Aaron Rodgers once again displays that he owns the Chicago Bears. And as a quick note for Justin Fields, while he is electric and all that, he's fun to watch. When he was put in the situation at the end of the game where everyone knew he had to pass it. He produced two picks. So that's something he has to work on because if, because if he can't get that much better, then that's the difference between, okay, you're talented enough to be a starter versus, oh, okay, yeah, you're a franchise quarterback. There's a difference. Jaguars versus Lions. I did not expect this to be a blowout, but congratulations for the Lions there. I'm not buying to them make potentially sneak into the playoffs quite yet because they have to host the fight against and they go at the Jets. If they go 2-0 and against those teams, then we'll revisit the subject. Browns versus Texans. I know that the Browns um, were going to go off to a slow start with Deshaun Watson being off for a while. I, I knew that was going to be the case. And that was a little bit worse than I thought, but I knew it was, he was going to be rusty. And it's going to continue to be like that throughout the whole entire season. So that's why I thought, you know, no matter what Jacoby Brissett did in his starts, that the Browns were going to make the postseason. Jets versus Vikings. Um... I predicted the Vikings win. I was right. Um, credit to the Jets in the second half for making a comeback there. Uh, but the main difference, obviously, was one of six in the red zone. Now, it's not all Mike Weiss' fault. I know Barrios dropped a would-be touchdown. Um, but here's the main stat, though. One of six in the red zone. And it's not because Mike White can't pass. But it's because he's one of those pocket passers. He's not mobile. And... You know, a few quarterbacks like Tom Brady, stuff like that, you can get away with not being mobile. But, like, but it really helps to, in this day and age to have a mobile quarterback, especially in the red zone, because the windows get tighter and all that in coverage. And it's nice to be able to uh, break the defense with, you know, using your legs and all that. So that way you can either open up windows or you can just get the three yards or something to get the first down instead of selling for a field goal constantly. So um, that's one thing that whether you like Zach Wilson or not, that's one thing that Wilson could do obviously way better than Mike White. And that's why I feel like Mike White's just a very good backup. But, you know, he has a big test at the Bills this week, so we'll see how he does there. Um, if he doesn't do well, then hopefully Zach Reboot's almost done. But if he does, then sure, play him. Commanders for the Giants. Now, of course, both teams want to win the game, but you're fine with the tie here. 
I'm mortified if you're Washington because this was on the road. But you're finding the way if you're if, if it's a tie because you're going to play each other in two weeks, and then that will basically determine who's going to get the sixth seed basically in the playoffs, and then who's going to be fighting for seventh or the first out. So um, for the Commanders, though. Their offensive line got exposed in this game. I have not seen them get exposed like that since the first month of the season. So that was interesting to behold there. Um, And for the Giants, I mean, this is one of the games where you had it. Uh, Titans versus Eagles, I did not expect it. I mean, I knew the Eagles defense was capable of this because we've seen it for most of the year. But the past couple weeks, they've kind of been slackish or sluggish, I should say. So that's why I thought this could be a close game, you know. But they dominated them. Congrats to the Eagles there. Um, Seahawks versus Rams. Um, I expect the Seahawks win. I didn't expect it to be this close, but you know, good job for the Rams making it interesting. Now they get Baker Mayfield, so we'll see what they do for the rest of the year there. Um, although I don't know for the Seahawks, Kenneth Walker being out, we'll see how long he's out for. If it's just a week or two, that's fine. But if he's out for any longer, then that's going to hurt their playoff chances there. Dolphins versus 49ers. Now a lot of people are saying that you know, uh, well, there's, there's I've actually heard a lot of people say, oh, the 49ers are still fine. Brock Purdy, but also heard, oh, you know, the season's over. But it's like. I'm on the I'm on the boat where it's like they're still gonna win division. There's no problem there. They're still gonna win division. They're still gonna win a first round playoff game, whether it's they face the Giants or the Commanders or the Seahawks. They're gonna win that. And then against the Vikings, it, although it'd probably be on the road, I would act, I just think the 49ers could still win that. Now, if Jimmy G is not he's out out seven eight weeks, so if he's not able to be back. By the NFC Championship game, which would either be at Philly or if you know Dallas gets hot, then it, they can host it. But either or, if they get to that point and they don't have Brock Purdy back, then it's over, in my opinion. Because especially if they get lucky and get to the Super Bowl, they're not going to win the Super Bowl. Brock Purdy, like that part's over because the Bengals and the Chiefs and all are way better. So we'll see how long Jimmy G's out. Chiefs versus Bengals. Um, you know how you know the. You know, it, the Jets struggle with the Patriots. The Packers, sh- uh, I'm sorry, the Bears struggle with the Packers. Well, it looks like we're starting to see that the Chiefs are just going to struggle with the Bengals here. It looks like that's going to be a thing here with Joe Burrow being 3-0 against the Chiefs. And, well, I'll, I'd will be fine if this is a if this is a rematch in the AFC Championship game. I, sign me up for that. <laughs> Chargers versus Raiders. Now I can finally see the Chargers are out of the playoffs. I mean, te- te- they're not technically out, but that's what I'm thinking with the injuries that they're having and just the way they're looking right now. And it's not good for Brian Staley, who's now clearly on the hot seat here. Um, and as far as the Raiders go, you know, I'm good for you. I'm going on a nice win streak here. We'll see if you can continue the good work. Colts versus Cowboys. Yes, it's alarming that this was close going to the fourth quarter, but, I mean, the Eagles won by one point against the Colts. I mean, this stuff happens in the NFL, but... The Cowboys, once again, show their dominance in the fourth quarter of what they're capable of. And then Saints versus Buccaneers. Congrats to Tom Brady for having this nice comeback win. But this is more about the Saints and their collapse there. I I know um, Mark Ingram hurt his knee, but it's like, get the extra yard. Dive if you have to. Lunge if you have to, if you feel like you can't use like Just do that or something. Um, and then on third and one, with like this was around five and a half minutes left over, don't pass it. Just run it. Run it with Taysom Hill or Alvin Kamara. Mostly Taysom Hill, but run it. And then, even if he had passed it there, then go for a fourth one step punt it. And give a chance for Tom Brady to get back in, which they did. And then, on the final offensive drive for the Saints, on second down, they shouldn't have passed, especially when you're doing a fake um, run and you're only going to have like one or two receivers option instead of having four receivers as an option, you know. Um, cause it's harder to cover that way. Um, I mean, good. It was good. that he don't take the sack there and, um, ran off some clock, but it's just like, if you would have run in there, you could have made, make it 35 through four and it's more manageable to make it versus having to convert on third and 17 there, which that has an incomplete and gave more time for the bucks. So it just shows once again, that Dennis Allen needs to be let go at the end of the season. I mean, if they do earlier, fine, but definitely this is a one and done job for him. So now it's time to go over my predictions um, for week 14. So let's see here. We got the Raiders versus the Rams. Um, For me, I feel like 
whether Baker Mayfield starts this game or not. Um, I'm going to have the Raiders win this game. They're obviously the better team right now. They'll have momentum. I, mean, I feel like it could be, especially as the Raiders are on the road here, although it's not that far travel. I feel like they, it could be a little bit tricky here on the short week. Um, but then the second half, they, you know, dominate and get the win. Have them winning 27 17. Jets versus Bills. Um, for me, this is a very interesting game. You know, the Jets got the win last time with Zach Wilson starter. Um, but again, with Mike White, though, I feel like, you know, he may be able to move the ball well. But again, I feel like he's going to have a lot of red zone issues again. Um, because the Vikings showed the Bills, hey, this is how we can defend them, at least in the red zone, to prevent them from scoring touchdowns. And I feel like that will be the difference of the game there. So I have the Bills winning this game 24-19. to Browns versus Bengals. Now, I know the Browns have had Joe Burrow's hand since the league, which is surprising um, in some cases. Even last time they played as a blowout. But I feel like this is the game where the Bengals finally not only win, but they get a blowout as Deshaun Watson continues to try to get used to game reps and the field and all that. So I have Bengals winning easily 34-13. Cowboys-Texans is an easy blowout. Nothing, nothing to discuss here, although Davis Mills is back to being the starter. Um, 45-10. That's the final score there. Uh, Vikings versus Lions. I have, I have this coming down right to the wire here. Um, at Detroit, th- these teams play pretty close. But again, I'm going to have events. When it's a close game like that, I'm going to have Minnesota get the victory there. So I have them winning 34 to 31. Eagles versus Giants. Um, I have this being a close game in the first half. But then with the Giants playing over overtime game and all that, I feel they're going to be really fatigued in, this, in the second half. Philadelphia start to pour and I'll get the win there. I have them winning 24-13. Ravens versus Steelers. I'm going to take the Steelers here for the upset. It's not really upset because Lamar Jackson's not playing, but I have them winning 17-7. Um, next, Chiefs-Broncos, not the see Chiefs win 20-10, to you know. I'll give, you know, it's hard to play at Denver, so that's why I'm not making too much of a blow up. But 20-10 is the final score there. Bucks versus 49ers. This one's interesting because I feel like the Buccaneers defense could contain Brock Purdy. But again, I feel like Tom Bray, if they can struggle against the Saints defense, they're not going to do anything against the 49ers defense. I have um, San Francisco winning 13-9, to and 9's being generous there for the Buccaneers. I'm um, sorry, I forgot the Jaguars-Titans there. I do feel like this is actually a little bit of a close game here, but then Titans start to pull away in the fourth quarter. They win 21-13 there. I just feel like there'll be too much with Jacksonville, especially since Trevor Lawrence is not 100%. Panthers-Seahawks. See how I have Seahawks winning easily here, 27 14. Um, and then Dolphins Chargers for Sunday football here. I actually have, I have this being um, a close game in the first half, but then again, Dolphins pull away in the second half here because the Chargers defense is just not that good. So I have Dolphins winning 35 24. And then for Monday football, Patriots and Cardinals. Um, the Cardinals have not been good at home all, all year. I feel like the Patriots D line, especially Matt John, can get pressure on the Arizona O-line there. So I have and the Patriots getting it done, keeping this on play the for now, 20-13. to 13. Um, Thank you very much for listening to my podcast today. Please subscribe to my channel to about me. Thank you very much. You have a wonderful day.